This video is brought to you by Captivating History. The period that historians usually classify as Ancient Greece spans around 7,000 years, stretching from the Neolithic Age up to the Roman invasion of Greece in 30 BCE. Many cultures rose and fell during this time, but the most famous eras of Ancient Greece came after the Greek Dark Ages, which fell between 1200 BCE and 800 BCE. After the region emerged from the Dark Ages, communities grew and formed the ancient Greek culture, which is still influential today. The climate in Greece during these times was a lot like it is today. In this mainly warm and dry environment, homes were built to keep cool rather than for warmth. Many Greeks still lived in rural areas despite the growth of the cities. The average home was a simple structure made of mud bricks covered in plaster with a wood frame and a roof made of clay tiles. Poorer people had dwellings with up to three rooms, but rich Greeks could afford larger houses. These bigger Grecian homes were built around a courtyard or garden and often had upper and lower stories. As in most modern homes, the downstairs would contain a kitchen, living room, and dining room. The upstairs would have the bedrooms and a room called the gynoseum, where women would weave and eat their meals away from the men. Their furniture was simple and often made of wood, even for the wealthiest Greeks. Items were kept in a wooden trunk, and couches were constructed by stringing rope webbing from a wooden frame and covering it with a rug. Their bedding was stuffed with wool, feathers, or dry grass. The house itself would have small windows with wooden shutters to provide shade from the hot sun during the summer and keep its interior cool. However, in some northern parts of Greece, the weather can still get cold in the winter, so Greeks would warm themselves in front of a fireplace. In around 350 BCE, the Grecians invented a rudimentary form of central heating, which was initially used in temples and then later in the homes of the wealthy. It was essentially underfloor heating, with a furnace feeding hot air and smoke under the floors of the building and then up through the walls. Greeks lucky enough to have this heating system could regulate the temperature with bronze ventilators in the walls. However, this heating style was very labor-intensive to maintain and operate, so it was limited to the richest citizens. Going to the bathroom in ancient Greece was a public affair, and using the toilet in front of others was even considered a sign of nobility. These communal toilets were made of marble slabs for the elite, limestone for everyone else, and were flat with holes at regular intervals. If you think that this sounds uncomfortable, add to that the fact that toilet paper was yet to be invented, and instead the Greeks wiped with small stones. Underneath the toilets were pipes full of flowing water that flushed the waste away. The Greeks were the first civilization to have plumbing. The Minoans of Crete were the first to use underground pipes to wash and use the bathroom. Depictions of Grecian kids' toys have been found on pottery and other artifacts, and many of them would not be out of place in a modern-day toy box. Toys similar to modern-day yo-yos, hoops, rattles, and stick horses, similar to hobby horses, were all common. Dolls were made of rags, wood, wax, or clay, and some even had movable arms and legs. Balls were made of tied-up rags or inflated pig's bladders. They even had a game similar to jacks that was played with the ankle bones of sheep or goats. As the small farming communities grew, so did educational opportunities. Boys from wealthy families could start receiving an education at the age of seven, as their families could afford a teacher. Still, most Greeks grew up to be farmers, fishermen, craftsmen, or sailors. Outside of Sparta, girls usually did not receive a formal education but were taught to cook, weave, and clean by their mothers. Girls were often married as young as 13, sacrificing their toys to the goddess Artemis to demonstrate they were now women. A girl's father would choose her husband, who was often much older, sometimes in his 30s. By 16, most girls were already wed. Life for Grecian children started when they were five days old and were welcomed into the family with a special ceremony. It has been suggested that before that fifth day, Grecian parents were allowed to abandon newborn babies and leave them to die if they wished. These abandoned babies could be found and adopted by other families, but they would be raised as a slave rather than family members. Slaves were common in ancient Greece, and wealthy families would often own men and women to help them run their houses. These house slaves were often well-treated, unlike those who worked on trading ships, in mines, or on farms. Slaves were captured in wars and sold, or were born into slavery. 
Aristotle describes those born into slavery as a piece of property that breeds. He felt that they were subhuman due to their deformities, never acknowledging that their deformities resulted from the hard labor they were subjected to. Although we do not know how the slaves felt, there were many reports on how the slave owners viewed this practice. It was not seen to be barbaric or cruel, and many Greeks grew up alongside their slaves, forming a kind of friendship. Any Greek who viewed slavery as inhumane simply treated their slaves well. It was an accepted part of life for the Greeks and one that they could not imagine living without. Like most ancient communities, bread was a staple food. They supplemented this with fruit, nuts, cheese, fish, vegetables, barley porridge, and eggs. Only the wealthy ate a large amount of meat in the form of hares, deer, and wild boar. Seafood was prominent due to the many coastal communities, and octopus was especially favored. Olives had a special place in the Grecian diet, and olive trees were a valuable asset. The Greeks ate olives and made olive oil, which was used in cooking, cosmetics, and oil lamps. People of all statures mainly drank water, especially sweetened with honey, or wine diluted with water. Fashion in Greece was simple, with most fabrics being made of wool or linen. Wealthier Greeks could afford imported cotton or silk. Men wore plain tunics, tied at the waist, with a cloak called a hymation in colder weather and a wide brim hat for traveling. Originally, Greek women wore a peplos, a rectangular piece of cloth pinned together and tied at the waist. Greek women could wear a peplos over a long tunic called chitons. A tan was not fashionable in ancient Greece, so women carried parasols to keep the sun off their skin. Greek women usually had long hair that was styled in various ways, and they would not cut it unless they were in mourning. Ancient Greece was predominantly a man's world, and in most cities, Greek women weren't afforded a great deal of freedom. Married women were expected to stay at home, look after the children, prepare food, spin thread, and weave fabric. Affluent women were actually more restricted than poorer women and were not allowed to leave the house unaccompanied by a man or a slave. A poor woman could go out alone to shop, wash clothes, and collect water, but only with her husband's permission. It is important to understand that Greece was not a unified country during this time. The small villages that sprang up during the Greek Dark Ages were relatively isolated, and as each one started to grow, it formed its own city-state with separate customs and laws. While the city-states had similar practices and lifestyles, they still differed in many ways. The two most dominant city-states were Athens and Sparta, mainly due to their predominantly stable economies. While they both maintained healthy economies, these two states were quite different. The Athenian economy was based on trade. They lived under a form of democracy and valued art, learning, and philosophy. Although the Athenians are credited with inventing democracy, many Greek states practiced this form of leadership. The democracy in Athens was also limited to male citizens who were over the age of 20. Women, slaves, and people who were not born in Athens could not vote. The Spartan civilization was more focused on military affairs than matters of the mind, and their economy was based on agriculture and conquering other societies. Sparta was an oligarchy rather than a democracy and was ruled by two hereditary kings. Where Athens rose to prominence due to its democracy, Sparta was the dominant military power in the area. Both Athens and Sparta used slaves, but they belonged to the city rather than being privately owned in Sparta. Slaves were responsible for all the manual labor in the city, which left the Spartan men free for military activities. The women of Sparta were more active than those of Athens in order to improve their physical strength and the health of their babies. Spartan women also enjoyed more rights than those of their Athenian counterparts. Spartan women had civil liberties, access to education, and could own property. Spartan girls would often marry at an older age than Athenians, but their marriages were usually still arranged. In Sparta, both boys and girls had physical education, although only the boys received vigorous military training from a young age until the age of 20. Sparta was not the only city-state to allow women to own land. Records show that women owned land in the Cretan city-state of Gorton and in Thessaly as well. There were even instances of women owning property in Athens. In some parts of ancient Greece, women ran taverns, sold goods such as perfume or food, and were wool workers. Despite Grecian society being largely patriarchal, there were many famous Greek women. 
Sappho, 630 to 570 BCE, Telesia of Argos, who rode in 494 BCE, and Anite of Tegea, who flourished during the 3rd century BCE, were celebrated poets. Theano of Cretona, born around 546 BCE, was a famous mathematician. There were many female philosophers, including Aridi of Cyrene, born around 400 BCE, Timicha of Sparta, flourished in the 4th century BCE, and Hipparchia of Maronea, 350 to 280 BCE. In around 150 BCE, a woman astronomer called Aglia Nike gained a reputation as a sorceress, as she could predict eclipses and seemingly had the moon under her command. One of the many things that started in ancient Greece was the Olympic Games, which were believed to be first held in 776 BCE in Olympia. Some Greek myths maintain that Zeus invented the games, others say it was Hercules, but the truth is, we do not know who created these legendary games. We do know that the games were part of a religious ceremony honoring Zeus, and that the warring Greek states would form a temporary truce for their duration. Men from all over Greece and beyond would come to represent their city-state and participate in the events. In the beginning, the Olympic Games consisted of one main event, a 600-foot-long track race, and winners were presented with olive wreaths. Over time, there were more events and fewer clothes. In the 7th century BC, nudity was common practice for participants. As more events were added, the games were extended from one day to five days. Winners were honored with statues erected in their hometowns, although when celebrated Olympian Astylos of Croton decided to represent Syracuse instead, the people of Croton destroyed his statue as retribution. The games continued during the Roman occupation of Greece before being abolished by Emperor Theodosius I in 393 CE. The Olympic Games were lost to history until 1875, when the Olympic ruins were uncovered, and less than 20 years later, Frenchman Baron Pierre de Corbetin resurrected the games. The first modern Olympics were held in Athens in 1896. Life in ancient Greece was varied, but much of it may seem familiar. Ancient Greek culture's influence on society worldwide is unprecedented for a civilization that ended before our current era began. To learn more about ancient Greece, check out our book, Ancient Greece, a captivating guide to Greek history starting from the Greek Dark Ages to the end of antiquity. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while it's still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.